Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanye Na Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschachyate Satarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're recounting the pastimes of Lord Krishna as described in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. And today we're on chapter number 38, Akrura's arrival in Vrindavan. So Narada Muni had gone to see he gone to see Kamsa and he was telling Kamsa how Krishna had actually taken birth. No, I no. What is it? Wait, Narada Muni. He'd gone to see Krishna. He went to see Krishna, and he told Krishna that how Krishna was going to kill different demons. So when Narada Muni met Krishna, he didn't mention about Krishna killing the Vyomasura demon. But he mentioned about he killed Kesi. Now Kesi was killed in the morning and the Vyomasura demon, he was killed in the, in the midday. Yeah, Casey Demon was killed early morning and 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 then after they killed Casey Demon then the boys went to the Govardhan Hill and it was on the Govardhan Hill that Vyomasura was killed. So, I, so actually both, both the demons, both KC and Vyomasura were both killed in the morning. And then Kamsa had told Akrura that he wanted Akrura to go to Vrindavan and bring Krishna and Balaram to Mathura. So Kamsa wanted Akrura to come that he wanted a, a career to reach Vrindavan by the evening. Uh, 
สะเนี่ยต้องการให้อัคูระเนี่ยพาพาคริสนากับบารามาให้ถึงในตอนช่วงตอนเย็น So a k u r a left. He comes to give him a new chariot, and and a k u r a came in his new chariot. He came to Vrindavan. He, he left in the morning, and he got to the Vrindavan in the evening. And a k u r a although he was sent by Kamsa, he's actually a devotee of Krishna. So while he was going to Vrindavan, he was praying to Krishna. And he was thinking always about Krishna's lotus feet and lotus eyes. His lotus face. He was always thinking about Krishna. Ah, <laughs> and he was thinking himself to be very fortunate because he'd been sent. He was getting the opportunity to go to Vrindavan to see Krishna and Balaram. And he is thinking, I'm not really qualified. I don't know. I I don't know what pious activity I could have done to qualify for this opportunity. So a good devotee will never think himself worthy to be serving Krishna. He always thinks, "I'm not qualified." So a k r u r a was thinking, "I'm not qualified to to go and see Krishna." And he, he, Prabhupada or Akrura gives the example. He said, just like somebody who's a sudra, they're not qualified to study the Vedas. So he said, I'm not qualified to see Krishna. But by the grace of Krishna, by Krishna's mercy, everything is possible. If Krishna likes, I I will be able to see him. And then he gives an example. He said, just like sometimes grass, some grass is floating on the river, and then that somehow that grass may come to the shore. So the same way a conditioned soul may be affected, it may be carried by the material nature, but by the grace of Krishna, somehow he's saved. So a k r u r a thought, if Krishna wants me to see him, I'll be able to see him. So he thought, I'm so fortunate. I'm going to see Krishna. Great yogis all want to see Krishna, 
and I'm, I'm a, somehow, I'm, I'm not a great yogi, but I'm, a, I'm being allowed to go and see him. And he thought that all my sin, when I see Krishna, all my sinful reactions will be removed from my past life. So many sinful reactions are there, but they will all be taken away just by seeing Krishna. So Akrura thought that Kamsa is sending me to bring Krishna and Balaram. So this is the mercy of Kamsa that I'm getting to go and see Krishna and Balaram. Akrura is thinking, he said, I know in the past great sages and saintly persons, they all were liberated from the material world just because they saw Krishna. So Akrura was actually aware of the identity of Krishna. He knew Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Akrura is in the mood of the servant. He's in Dashyaras, right? Because he was coming to drive Krishna's chariot. He's Krishna's chariot driver. So this is servitude. This is Dashyaras. So he's, Akrura is thinking that, that I know Krishna is the Supreme Lord, but he's come just like an ordinary human being. So I'm so fortunate, I'm going to be able to see him face to face. And Akrura was thinking, he said, that these lotus feet of Krishna are worshipped by demigods like Brahma and Shiva and Narada. And these lotus feet of Krishna, they walk on the ground, on the dust of Vrindavan. And Krishna also touches the, the gopis, the milk the cowherd girls of Vrindavan. So Akrura thought, I'm so fortunate, I'm going to be able to see the same lotus feet today. And I, and I will see also his beautiful face with the beautiful tilak. I will see his, his beautiful smile and his curling black hair.
And Akrur said, I'm sure this is going to happen because the, now it's a very auspicious omen. I see a very auspicious omen. The deer are passing on my right side. So that's very auspicious. I know that Krishna is the Supreme Vishnu. He is the Lord of the spiritual world of Vaikun, Vai Vishnu Loka. And he's, he is the reservoir of all beauty. So today my eyes will achieve perfection. Just to see Krishna is the perfection of the eyes. So Akrura knew without any doubt that Krishna is the Supreme Lord Vishnu. And Lord, Lord Vishnu, he glances, when he glances over the material energy, then that's the beginning of the creation, the, the material world comes into being. Lord Vishnu is like the creator of the material world. But he is he is he is He's not under the influence of the material energy. Because he has his own internal potency and it, it, the internal potency cannot be affected by the material potency. So in the same way, Krishna is the original Vishnu and his internal potency creates all the inhabitants of Vrindavan. All the paraphernalia and all the Play, the place of Krishna are all Krishna's internal potency. And the, that same potency, that same internal potency which is in Goloka Vrindavan, it's that same potency which is there in Vrindavan on this planet Earth. And, it's, and it's in Vrindavan, Krishna enjoys himself with his parents and with the cowherd boys and with the gopis, all of his friends. So like, just as Krishna is transcendental to the material energy, all the people of Vrindavan are also transcendental to the material energy. Then Akrura also thought about that Krishna's pastimes are very important. Krishna 
And he thought that all of Krishna's pastimes and Krishna's instructions, they're all for the, for the good of the people, for all the people. So people can remain in Krishna consciousness. People can remain in Krishna consciousness by talking about Krishna's pastimes and by discussing his form and qualities. This is how we can all stay in Krishna consciousness. So when we do that, then the world becomes very peaceful and we can advance and the whole, the whole universe becomes very uh, peaceful and auspicious. But if there's no Krishna consciousness, then the, the material world is just like a dead body. Just, just like if somebody's dead, you may decorate them, but what it's useless. It doesn't have any meaning. They're dead. So human society, even though we're human, if we don't have Krishna consciousness, it's useless. It has no meaning, no value. So Akrura was thinking about Krishna, how he had appeared in the Yadu dynasty to establish religious principles. And those who follow the religious principles, they're demigods, they're like demigods. And those who don't follow, they're the demons. So Krishna appeared in this world to protect the demigods because they follow the laws of Krishna. So, the demigods and the devotees, they both take pleasure in following the laws of Krishna and Krishna takes pleasure in giving them protection. So the activities of Krishna are very good for people to hear and to describe and talk about. And this is what the devotees and the demigods talk about. They will always be talking about Krishna, about his qualities, his form, his pastimes. So Krishna is the spiritual master. He is the guru of all gurus and he delivers the fallen souls. And he is also, he's, the three worlds also belong to him, it's his property. Uh, 
So Akrura thought, today I will be able to see that personality who has, who is so attractive that he attracts the goddess of fortune to live with him. We are all attracted to the goddess of fortune. Sometimes she gives mercy, but she doesn't stay with us for very long. Right? We get some money, but then it goes with no money. And so the goddess of fortune goes, she's chanchala, but she's always with Krishna. So Akrura thought, when I get, when I reach Vrindavan, I'm going to get down from my chariot and I'm going to offer full obeisances at the lotus feet of Krishna. The Krishna's lotus feet are always worshipped by the great yogis, so I will also worship his lotus feet. And when I bow down to Krishna, then Krishna will place his hand, his lotus hand on my head. So everyone who takes shelter of Krishna's lotus feet, then Krishna will put his, he will offer his hand to that person. So anybody who is afraid of the material world, they have to take shelter of Krishna. And by the touch of his lotus hand on our head, then we will be freed of all fear. Then Akrura gives some examples. He said, just like when Krishna's hand touched the, the offerings of King Indra and King Bali, they both became qualified to become the Lord of the Universe. Indra became the king Indra became the king of the universe just now and Bali will become the king of the universe in the future. This is possible just by the touch of Krishna's hand, Lotus hand. And with that same hand, Krishna touched the gopis when they danced Rasa Leela. Because the gopis were sweating, they were dancing, they were sweating, so Krishna would wipe the sweat off their face with his lotus hand. And with the touch of Krishna's lotus hand on their face, then they did not feel any more tired. So, 
Atur is giving example, he said, Indra, he offered a little water to Krishna's hand and because he offered a little water, though he became, so he became the king of heaven. And Bali Maharaj, he gave Krishna a little water in his hand and he also gave him three steps of land in charity and as a result of that he also will become Indra in the future. But even more important, the gopis, Krishna took that hand, that hand which got the water from Indra and Bali Maharaj, with that same hand, Krishna wiped the sweat from the face of the gopis. And Krishna's hand is described to be, it has the fragrance of a lotus flower which grows in the Manasasarova lake. So the Manasa Sarova lake, that's a very special lake up in Himalayas and Kailash where Lord Shiva lives. And there's these beautiful lotuses there which are very, very fragrant. So Krishna's hand is compared to that. So Akrura, he's also thinking, I hope I will also get a benediction from that hand of Krishna. Because Krishna, by his hand, he gave blessings to Indra and to Bali Maharaj, and so he should also give blessings to me. Of course, they have to take to Krishna consciousness in order to get Krishna's blessing. If you want material happiness, if you want to be like Indra, the king of heaven, you can get that from the hand of Krishna. And if you want to get liberation from material life, from material world, you can also get that from the hand of Krishna. But if we want to get pure love for Krishna and we want to have personal association with Krishna, then we can get that from the touch of Krishna's hand. So we should think, what do we want? Do you want to be Indra, the king of heaven, or do you want liberation, or do you want to be a friend of Krishna? 
เราอยากจะหลุดพ้นจากโลกวัตถุหรือว่าเราอยากจะเป็นพระอินทร์หรือว่าเราอยากจะเป็นเพื่อนของพระชนาที่รักพระองค์ So only the fool will want material things. The real devotee will want to be with Krishna, to be Krishna's friend. So Akrura was worried because he knew that he's coming to Vrindavan. To, he's been sent by Krish, by Kamsa, and Kamsa is the enemy of Krishna. And Krishna knows Kamsa is the enemy, and Akrura is going there under the orders of Kamsa. So he thought, "I'm a messenger of the enemy. I become the enemy of. I become the messenger of the enemy of Krishna." But he thought Krishna is in everyone's heart. So he must know also my heart. He must know I'm not his enemy. He must know I'm his devotee. So although Akrura was trusted, Kamsa trusted him. Akrura's heart is clean. He's a pure devotee of Krishna. So he became, he came the messenger of Kamsa. He, he did this service just because he knew it's a great opportunity to meet Krishna. He didn't do it just for Kamsa, but he do it. He did it because he wanted to meet Krishna. So although he was going as a servant of Kamsa, he knew Krishna wouldn't think of him as an enemy. So Akrur is thinking. He said, "This is actually a sinful mission because I'm doing it for Kamsa." So when I come before Krishna, I will stand humble and fold my hands, offer my respects to Krishna. And I, I think Krishna will be pleased with my devotion. And Akura thought, I think Krishna will smile at me, and he will look at me, and and this way I will get free of all my sinful reactions. And when when I approach Krishna, then Krishna will embrace me. He said, "I am also a member of the Yadu dynasty. I am his relative, and I am also his pure devotee." And when he embraces me, then I will get free of all the reactions of my past lives. He said, he said, I'm sure Krishna and Balaram, they'll call me 
Anko, Akrura Anko, I'm their Anko, and at that time my whole life will be glorious. Unless, but unless somebody is able to do something for Krishna, our life is not successful. We, everyone should try to do some service for Krishna with love and devotion and to get the appreciation of Krishna. Then our life is meaningful. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, he is equal to everyone. He doesn't have any enemies, he doesn't have any friends. But he has a special relationship for those who serve him with love and devotion. Prabhupada said it's natural. He said a woman likes children. She likes all children, but she will have a special love for her own child. That is natural. In the same way, Krishna likes all living entities, but he has a special love for his devotees. A father may have many children, but he will have a special love for the child who is obedient to him. And Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita that according to how we surrender, Krishna reciprocates. So Akrura thought Krishna is just like a desire tree in the heavenly planets which can give fruit according to the desire of the person. Yeah, on this planet, you can only get the fruit according to the type of tree. If it's a pear tree, you'll get pears. You can't get any other fruit from it. But in the heavenly planets, they have the desire tree. Whatever fruit you want, you can wish for it, it will come from that tree. So in the same way, Krishna is the source of everything. But we have to know how to serve him. To, uh, how to please Him. And so it's recommended we should serve Krishna and also serve the spiritual teacher. And in this way we can make progress, make advancement. 
เราเนี่ยก็ควรที่จะรับใช้คริสนาผ่านทางการรับใช้พระอาจารย์ในลักษณะนี้นะจะทําให้เราเนี่ยมีความพัฒนาในชีวิตที่ในวิถี The spiritual master is a representation is a representative of Krishna so by pleasing him then Krishna is pleased พระอาจารย์ยิ้มเนี่ยถือว่าเป็นตัวแทนของคริสนาเพราะฉะนั้นจากการที่เราเนี่ยทำให้พระอาจารย์ทรงพึงพอพระทัยนั้นก็หมายความว่าเราทำให้คริสนาทรงพึงพอพระทัย Just like in the government office if you work in the government office you work under the head of the department and if the head of the department is pleased then you get promotion เหมือนการกับการที่เราเนี่ยทำงานสมมติเราทำงานแบบรับราชการสมมติเราทำงานให้กับรัฐบาลแต่เสร็จนี้เราทํางานดีมากจนหัวหน้าแผนกเราเนี่ยชื่นชอบเพราะหัวหน้าแผนกเราชื่นชอบเนี่ยก็จะให้โปรโมทเราให้มีการเลื่อนตําแหน่ง So a crier thought when Krishna and Balaram are pleased with me they will take me to their home and they will give me they will, they will be they will give me a nice reception และอกุระก็คิดว่าเมื่อกษากับบาลารามได้เจอข้าแล้วเขาก็ชอบข้าแล้วเนี่ยเขาก็จะเชิญข้าไปต้อนรับข้าอย่างดีแล้วไปที่บ้าน And they will ask me about the activities of Kamsa and his friends แล้วก็น่าจะถามข้าเกี่ยวกับภารกิจของคำสักกิจกรรมของเขา So then at the end of the day a k u r a came to Mathura He's on his, he, he reached f r i n d a v a n by the end of the day. He'd been meditating on Krishna the whole day. At the end of the day, he came to v r i n d a v a n and he, he didn't notice how long he'd been t r a v e l i n g And、he came to Vrindavan just as the sun was going down, and he saw the footprints of the cows, and he saw Lord Krishna's footprints. He could see the marks of Lord Krishna's lotus feet on the ground. แล้วตอนที่เขาถึงบรินดาวันเนี่ยก็เป็นช่วงตอนที่พระอาทิตย์เนี่ยกำลังจะตกดินแล้วก็ทันทีที่เขาเข้าเขตบรินดาวันเนี่ยเขาก็ได้เห็นรอยเท้าของผู้วัวแล้วก็รอยพระบาท And when, when Akrura saw Krishna's lotus feet footprints in the dust, he jumped down from his chariot, and he was he was crying, and his body was trembling, and he fell in the dust, and he rolled in the dust. <laughs> เนี่ยปรากฏว่าเขาเนี่ยก็กระโดดลงมาจากเอ่อจากเกวียนที่เขามาด้วยนะเขาก็ร้องไห้แล้วเขาก็ลูกล้มลงไปกับพื้นดินด้วยความยินดีปรีดาเป็นอย่างมาก So a k r u r a s journey to Vrindavan is how we should also go when we enter Vrindavan we should enter in the same mood as a k r u r a เพราะฉะนั้นเวลาเราไปวรินดาวันเนี่ยเราก็ควรที่จะไปวรินดาวันกับอารมณ์ของอคูระนี้ We should, we should constantly think of Krishna's pastimes and activities, and when we reach Vrindavan, we should take the dust of Vrindavan all over our body. ดินที่เป็นดาวันแล้วก็คุกคลีกลิ้งไปบนพื้นของบรรดาวันให้ฝุ่นที่เป็นดาวันเนี่ยอยู่บนตัวเรา Don't think about your material position. Don't think about your material ego, your 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 respect. Don't worry about. Just take the dust of r i n d a v a n on your body and give up all thought of sense gratification. Then we will be able to actually enter Vrindavan. อย่าไปคิดถึงพื้นฐานตำแหน่งอะไรที่เรามีที่โลกวัตถุใดๆแล้วก็ไม่ต้องคิดถึงการที่จะได้รับความเคารพจากใครหรือว่าใครจะมองเราว่ายังไงหรือว่าความสุขจากการที่เราจะสนองประชาสัมพัทธ์อะไรต่าง
ยกเลิกความคิดเหล่านั้นทั้งหมดแล้วว่าไปในอารมณ์แห่งความอ่อนน้อมของ We cannot go to Vrindavan just by purchasing a ticket. If you want to go to Vrindavan, you have to show, follow this example of Akrura. So then Akrura came in Vrindavan and he saw Krishna and Valaram, and they were watching the cows being milked. And Krishna was in yellow and Balaram in blue. And he saw Krishna and Balaram with their beautiful lotus eyes, and he, he, they were very, they were young in their in, the, in their youth. And they have the same kind of bodily features. Krishna is blackish, Balaram is white. And they have strong bodies and beautiful hands and pleasing faces and strong as elephants. So Krishna and Balaram were smiling at him, and Akrura could he understood they'd just come back from the forest, they'd just brought the cows back, and they'd taken their bath, and they had put on fresh clothing and nice garlands of flowers around their neck. <laughs> So Akrura considered himself very fortunate to see Krishna and Balaram face to face. Akrura knew that Krishna had appeared just for the benefit of the, this world to re-establish religious principles and to destroy the demons. So Akrura didn't hesitate. He immediately he got down from his chariot and he fell flat like a stick, like a rod in front of Krishna and Balaram. And his voice choked up and he could not speak. He was feeling so much pleasure. Tears were falling from his eyes. He was stunned in ecstasy. So Krishna picked up Akrura and embraced him, and Balaram also embraced him, and then they took him to their home, to their sitting room, and they brought him nice place and water for washing his feet. And they offered a Krura a cow, they gave him a cow in charity, and then they brought him all nice foodstuffs for a Krura to eat. And they brought him all nice foodstuffs for a Krura to eat. 
ทานแล้วก็เอาผลไม้อาหารการกินมาให้ And Balaram then gave him betel nut and spices, and they put sandalwood on him to cool him, to make him comfortable. So Balaram and Krishna gave a very nice reception to Akrura because he's their senior, he's their uncle. Then Nanda Maharaj came, and he was speaking to Akrura because Nanda Maharaj is like the father of Krishna, and he's asking Akrura. He said, "He said, uh, I know you're you're supposed to be protected by Kamsa, but Kamsa is very cruel and demonic." Kamsa's protection is just like in the slaughterhouse, where they keep animals in the slaughterhouse. They're going to kill them in the future. So Kamsa's Kamsa's like that. He killed his own sister's sons. Devaki gave birth to six children, and he killed them all. So Nanda Maharaj says, "I don't believe he can protect the citizens of Mathura." So when Nanda Maharaj was speaking to Akrura this way, Akrura forgot about. His tiredness about his long journey to come there to Vrindavan. So we have to. We will hear why Akrura has to tell the people of Vrindavan why he's come, that he's going to take Krishna away from Vrindavan. So of course it's going to be very dramatic. Okay, so we we'll, that's the end of this chapter. Thirty-eight, Akrura's Krishna Guru Maharaj Dhanavarpanam, please accept my humble obeisances uh, according to Sila Prabhupan. Ajana uh, Pahabhi Nana Ha. He mi kwan song sai wa yang demi ko ding ya ha. Go to wa pen pajau nai Hinduism. Ding ya ha. Jini ya lo jami kwan kho jai de ya ngai wa เอ่อเดมิโกรนะคะเป็นสัพพวิญญาณน่ะประเภทไหนเพราะว่าอย่างเราเรียนไปว่าปกวันปรมาตมาแล้วก็ปรามันเนี่ยเป็นพระเจ
Guru Maharaj, her question is uh, to the demigod, like uh, in which category they will come? Like uh, Bhagavan is like Brahman, uh, Brahma, Paramatma, and Bhagavan is the supreme, supreme Lord we know as. And for us, we know as a soul or the conditioned soul. And for the demigod, how, in what type they will come? Well, demigods are also jivatmas. They're also like us. They're also conditioned souls. Uh, they are living entities. We have also been demigods in the past. We go up, the, the living entities, we can go up to be demigods, we go up and we come down and we go you know, like that, we're in the material world, taking birth in these different conditions. When we have good karma, the, the demigods, they have good karma. That means they're pious, they have a lot of piety, so they get positions of demigods. And when, when we finish all our piety, when we use up all of our pi all, all of our punya karma, then we come back to earth. So the demigods, they are jivas. They're not. Brahm they can go up. Of course, they can also get liberated. They can go up to the the Brahman. They can achieve Brahman. Paramatma, <laughs> the Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. This is Krishna. This is all the absolute truth. These are three phases of the absolute truth. So this is all different realizations of God. The demigods are not God. So there's a difference between the Lord and the living entities. The Lord is the, he's the possessor of the energy and we're the energy of Krishna, we're his prakriti. It's described in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Right? There's a, there's the uh, the there's earth, water, fire, air, ether, that's the lower prakriti, and there's a superior prakriti, the higher prakriti, which are the living entities. But Krishna is not Prakriti, Krishna is Parusha. He's the enjoyer of the Prakriti. It's his Prakriti, his energy. All right, is it clear, Shaya? พี่ชายค่ะเข้าใจมั้ยคะบอก
ข้าใจพี่ไหมพาพาอะไรบ้างนะพาซีวะแล้วก็พาอะไรนะคะพาหน้าร้ายนะคะใช่ก็เหมือนกับว่าของเดมีกอดใช่ไหมเอ้ยพระเจ้าของฮินดูอีซึมใช่ไหมอย่างเงี้ยคือเขาเหมือนกับอย่างพระแม่พระแม่อย่างเงี้ยคือเรารู้ว่าคือพลังงานเบื้องต่ําถูกปะเป็นปกิติอะไรเงี้ยแต่ทีเนี้ยเราจะสามารถเรียกเขาเป็นดวงวิญญาณแบบไหนอย่างเงี้ยเข้าใจพี่ไหมดวงวิญญาณก็คือจริงเขาสูงในกรณีของพาสติวาเนี่ยมันน่าจะตักเดี๋ยวให้เดี๋ยวให้กุลมาลาอธิบายนะคะนี่สนใจตรงนี้โอเคขอบคุณค่ะแอนชีเล็กลอดซีวะลอดชีวะเอสเอลแคนวีคอนซิเดอร์ฮิมออโซทูบีเซมแอนเล็กเดวีดูร์กาเดวีแอนอ๋อ this special demigod that normally We know them as a Hindu's god. That's what she said. Yes. Well, what is their position? They're under the control of the Supreme Lord. ก็คือเราต้องทราบถึงตำแหน่งของพวกเขานะคะตำแหน่งของพวกเขาก็คืออยู่ภายใต้การควบคุมของบุคลิกภาพสูงสุดแห่งพระเจ้า Lord Shiva, he is responsible for destruction, but he does the destruction under the order of the Supreme Lord. When the Supreme Lord Vishnu tells him, "Now you destroy," then he does it. He doesn't just do it independently. He's under the order of the Supreme Lord. เทพเจ้าแห่งการทำลายใช่ไหมคะเพราะฉะนั้นการทำลายของพระสิวะเนี่ยก็จะเป็นไปดูภายใต้คําสั่งของกฤษณะนั่นเองเพราะฉะนั้นท่านจะไม่มาคิดเองว่าโอเคทําลายแล้วเดี๋ยวจะทําลายเองก็คือภายเขาจะปฏิบัติตามภายใต้คําสั่งของกฤษณะ and similarly mother Durga she's like the shadow under the control of the supreme lord แล้วพระนางดูรกาค่ะก็เหมือนกับเป็นเงาเงาที่อยู่ภายใต้การควบคุมของพระชาชีสนัตอินเดเพนเดนต์เพราะเขาเนี่ยไม่ได้เป็นอิสระ so they are also the they are demigods they are also demigods they're not the supreme lord พวกเขาเนี่ยจะถือว่าเป็นเหล่าเทวดาอ of course they're very special demigods they're very they're not like ordinary there's ordinary demigods you know they're just they don't have much power much position but Lord Shiva Durga they're very powerful they're very important demigods Lord Shiva is almost God ดเพราะฉะนั้นเหล่าเทวดาเนี่ยก็จะแบ่งออกเป็นหลายประเภทก็คือจะมีเทวดาที่เป็นเทวดาเฉยๆที่ได้ทําบุญมาแล้วก็ได้ไปเกิดผลสวรรค์เป็นเทวดาไม่อาจจะไม่ได้มีพลังอิทธิฤทธิ์อะไรมากมายแต่ว่าอย่างเช่นพระสิวะหรือว่าพระแม่เนี่ยพวกเขาพวกท่านเนี่ยเป็นเทวดาที่มีพลังอิทธิฤทธิ์พิเศษก็คือเป็นเทวดาที่พิเศษมากๆแล้วก็มีคุณสมบัติที่คล้ายๆพระอุบัญเจ้าเนี่ยอยู่ในตัว The Lord Shiva has his own line, his own line of disciplic succession. But most of the devotees of Lord Shiva, they just want to get some cheap blessing from Shiva. They don't want to be devotee. They just want to get some material blessing from Shiva, like Hindu. People who are Hindu, they just want to get some blessings. They think Lord Shiva's worship just to get their material desires. So, so yeah, แล้วเนี่ยสาวกของพระศิวะก็คือเขาจะอยากได้พรสำหรับตัวเองเนี่ยแค่ในในโลกวัตถุเท่านั้นเขาไม่ได้อยากจะได้ความรักที่มีต่อพระองค์ So Lord Shiva has two potencies. One is the cheating potency. He will give them material blessings. That's the cheating potency. But his real blessing, his real mercy, is where you become the devotee, 
and you get instruction how to be in the line of disciplic succession to worship the Supreme Lord. There are many great devotees of Lord Chaitanya, they never went to Vrindavan. There's many. Mm. So they would go to Jagannath Puri, they would be in Mayapur, they would go to Jagannath Puri, but they never went to Vrindavan. Not everybody goes to Vrindavan. So what you say is true that you get more you get the mercy in Mayapur. You don't get so the same mercy in Vrindavan. So uh, anyway, Vrindavan is like a place for you know, like for the end of life more than for early in life. It's more like when you're in the end of life, then you go to Vrindavan. Anyway, you don't have to worry about it just now. Not too many people coming to India just now. Not a problem. But yes, you should get permission from the spiritual master. You don't want to go on your own. You don't want to go independently. Okay. Yeah. Another question? Yes, you must. Maybe Yogi Tamati. Mm hmm. Hare Krishna, Gurudev, please take some humble obeisances. Gurudev, first, sorry I came very late today, night from back from work late. So, anyways, Gurudev, I, I had a question in mind that I want to ask you. Since I heard just one sentence that you were talking about uh, demigods having collected a lot of good karma, so they became demigods. Gurudev, I heard the last thing a uh, day before, uh, they mentioned that uh, Ashwatthama in Ramayan, who was so bad, he has been blessed to take uh, the form of Vedabhyas in the coming time. And I was wondering, what good karmas did he do, Gurudev? I mean, I didn't hear more, so I, I just couldn't even imagine. Vedavyasa's form, Ashwatthama, that's, wow. 
So I was wondering if you could, you know, guide me on this aspect. Okay. คำถามของมาตรีนะคะก็คือมาตรีนะได้ยินมาในช่วงการฟังเกี่ยวกับเรื่องราวลีลาค่ะที่เมื่อกี้ได้ยินไปว่าการเป็นเหล่าเทวด
ทําไมพ่อเดอดูมาราจะไม่ให้วัยวัยหนุ่มให้กับพ่อให้ที่พ่อขอตอนที่พ่อโดนสักเขาไม่ให้แต่กฤษณาก็ยังจะคิดจะมาในมาในเยดูมาเป็นลูกของเยดูทำไมพระเจ้าถึงเลือกเลือกมาเป็นลูกของเยดูทําไมไม่ใช่ไม่ได้มาในไม่ได้มาเป็นลูกของลูกชายคนเล็กที่Oh, because his uh, elder son didn't uh, give his youth to the father, and uh, Krishna come in the elder son. Yeah. Why? Why not the younger one? Because younger one uh, give his youth to the father. Must sacrifice. Sacrifice. Yes, Guru Maharaj. You understand? I don't understand the question. No. The the question is why Krishna take the uh, uh, take birth in take birth in, in, in Yadu, young, not in the younger son. Well, it's all the same family. The same family. It's all one. Eki eki pariwara re prode. Eki pariwara. Paras, but the Yadu, his uh, didn't give his age to his father. He's not pleased to his father, my Yayati Maharaj. But Paras was pleased his father. But Krishna still choose the Yadu. That li little con confusing man. Well, they're all devotees. That's the point. Krishna took birth in the Yadu dynasty because they're all devotees. By their devotion, they attracted him. อืมกี่บอกตอนนึงตัวเอยาดูยังบอกไปอ๋อยาดูไปไม่ไอ้งงอยู่นี่ใครจะถาม you can you can't make any distinction between the family of the the Puru and the, and his elder brothers you know they're all one family it's the same family it's the same line as the Yadu dynasty I don't know why you, you know, want to make distinction. Yeah, Puru gave his youth for his father, for Yayati. But it's Yadu, Yadu, the Yadu dynasty, right? It's not just Yayati, it's the Yadus. The Yadu dynasty. Maharaj Yadu, not Yayati. Yadu is an elder son of Yayati Maharaj, right Maharaj? So, Yadu. Yadu is the head of the family. It doesn't matter. They're all the one, they're the same family, the same dynasty. It's still the Yadu dynasty. Krishna actually takes birth from Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. He doesn't take birth from Vasudev and Devaki. That was that was Sham, that was Vasudev Krishna. But Shamsundar Krishna is the son of Nanda Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Comes in Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I don't really see, you can't, you know, Krishna chooses where he wants to take his birth. He chose. You, wanted to, you can't say why he, why he take birth there, why doesn't he take birth there. Hmm. See, they were all devotees. Puru, okay, he gave his youth for his father, doesn't mean he's a better devotee, doesn't mean he's a better devotee. The elder brothers were also good devotees. They wanted, they just wanted to renounce later on in life. But they were all devotees. Okay, they are devotees. That's why Krishna come from that dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, another two more questions with that. Okay. Mm, Kongsawat. Kongsawat Chelleha. ที่เอเชียครับมีคําถามที่จะอธิบายว่าถ้าเราอยากจะได้รับพรจากองค์พระศาสนาเนี่ยเช่นเราถวายของพระเช่นถวายอาหารถวายผ้าสาลีครับต
Is he chanting? Is he chanting? Is he chanting Hare Krishna? Okay, Guru Maharaj, next question from Himalata Madaji. Ask, ask that Thai boy, is he chanting Hare Krishna? How many rounds is he chanting? Okay, Nine to ten rounds he is chanting. Okay. So tell him to try to chant more. Prabhupada recommends we should chant sixteen rounds every day at least. Okay. So Himalata Takarani has a question. Yes, Guru Dev Hare Krishna, Tandavat Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Guru Mataji. Hare Krishna. My question is, what is the question? Koti Borsa Ku Boy Pasi, Mala Logai Dinosaur Rich, and the Orko Cheni, and the Botta Rulai of Kosari. Noram Rosongota Rudi Kinshane, the Hinkostri Bochairo, Bawanko Pabaji, Bakti Mamaka, Bawanko Bakti Makosari Logone, Kinoki of Noram Ruth of Siki Ajan Bochai, the Bridge Hutu, Gorda Hirtojin is like Kosari Chi, Apple Gorda on Johnny, on your Bochai, like Hirijas to our Ramrojinis, Noram Rojinis, Tayo and a Tayo Tayo and Johnny Kune Bochai, you know. अब तो आप ले उन्हें लाइ तो पूरा गौर दिना पड़ जाए तो अब जस्ट तो क्यों उन्हें लाइ जी चाहिए तो जिन्हें पूरा गौर दिनों तो ब्राह्म रोहो आई ना तो ये मलाई जाना मलाई नेपाली वालों बाम दिनों लोग आता जी खाई आदि कितने आम दर को दिना हाँ जो ना जी हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू हाँ जी हाँ क and how can she help him from bad habit or bad association? And when he asks for the bad thing, how can uh, should she give or not give? How can he she raise her in a very uh, Krishna consciousness way? How, how could she do that? Well, she should give him the Kuntimala now, as soon as possible, from birth. And you want you don't want your child to have the bad things, so you should not have the bad things yourself. If you don't have the bad things, then your child won't get the bad things. So you have to be the example. You should be chanting. If you're chanting, then your child will also want to chant. Shani, <laughs> 
तो नॉन वेज रु खाइन तर बाहर गए देखे तो जिनस उ खाँचु भस्त गुरु महाराज ने भन्न भो कसरी नखिला मतलब कसरी समझा बच्चा अस्त नहीं एकजा प्रभुजी ने सोदा भन्न भेस्त अब नराम वर्ड उन्नी बाहर बार आए बाहर गए आए तस्त जिनस कसरी बचा कसरी समझा अब गाली कर भैन फुटे भैन कसरी समझा Okay, Gurmash, and she said like maybe even in in at home they are vegetarian, they are chanting, so he can see all of that. But when he go out to see his friend and see them eating non-veg, and so he and using bad words, something like that, and then he come back home and he like ask about that. But in your previous lecture, she already heard that how to explain to them not to eat meat. So she's uh, applying that, and uh, sometimes they say bad words, something like that. So how how should like should she by not heeding him? Then how can like you know she explain to him not to behave some behave that in that way? Well, you have to teach him. You have to tell him clearly that this is a bad word that you don't want to say and. Maybe this, where his friends, maybe his friendship is not good. You have to be more careful where he goes, and who he goes to fr make friends with. Okay. उसको साथ ही को संगति है मजे तो वो जाओगे कि तेरे हेड दिन होना था अने बोलने के जो इस तो नॉर्म लो जो नॉर्म लो सब दाग लो बोलने में ना तेरे तो है सो तस्त साथी सिंह अब आपू बचा पो अफूसंग रिशाओस् या जे सुक सोचो नहीं उसे नबोल नबोलता संगति आपू बच्चा नपठाए पी फरक पर्दन मतलब रिशाए नहीं कहीं फरक पर्दन अवन इफ दे गेट एंग्री अफ अस लाइक वी थेम नॉट टू एसोसिट विथ दोस फ्रेंड एंड They disappoint, but still we we do that for their good. Even they don't like, is that okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You have to tell them. You know, you have to tell them that this is this kind of friendship is not very good for you. You should okay. be careful. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj Hari Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Naja, naja. Arshuna Patel, Hare Krishna. I have one question. Can I? Okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Dev, Dhanvant Pranam. Guru Dev, when these uh, when demigods uh, finish their pious time in the heavenly planet, and when they come down, like uh, to this uh, to this earth, do they take birth in uh, in uh, devotees' families or? Or, or any other material families. Well, it it will depend on how much devotee. If they were devotees as demigods, you see, not all demigods are devotees. Some de well, some demigods are more devotees than others, but they must have had some devotion. In order to take birth in a devotee family, they have to have been devotee in their. Somewhere devotee in their past life, they must have been quite okay. pious. It's not easy to take birth in a devotee family. That's a okay. that's a higher birth than a demigod. Okay. Okay, Gurudev. Thank you. So to be born in a devotee family is very very fortunate. It's a sign that they were already advanced in their previous life. Arjun, mm. but they do they get an opportunity even to come in contact with devotees uh, since they are coming from a heavenly mm. planet? Mm. Yeah, maybe that that's mercy. That's opportunity to come in contact with devotees. That's the mercy of a devotee. <laughs> Okay. Okay, Guru Dev. Thank you so much. Ah. Uh.
Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Yes. Uh, I have uh, a question about uh, Kanti Mala. The weather has been very hot, and uh, the skin on the where the Kanti Mala rests, the neck, my skin is itching. What should I do? Maybe you can put some powder. Put some talcum powder <laughs> around your neck. This is not the first time, and this is my second time changing the Kanti Mala as well. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's a very good question. Yeah, maybe you, you don't need to put the beads so tight. Alright. Can it be removed uh, occasionally? Well, yeah. usually we try not to remove them because you ne we never know when we're going to have to leave the body. And if you have to leave the body without having the neck beads, it's not very good. So we, we like to keep them on in every situation. But, you know, as I say, you know, you, you may not keep them so tightly around your neck, then you shouldn't find it so difficult on your skin. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Guru Maharaj. I think we end here. Okay, thank you very much, Archana, for your translation. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your Thank time. all the devotees for all their questions and for listening. Nice to have your association. Please take care, stay healthy. Well, <laughs> hope to see you all next week. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. 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 Yeah.